The development of gas turbine technology in the automotive industry was a topic that, although some remained skeptical about its practicality, had strong and serious support from certain brands like Chrysler and General Motors. In 1964, General Motors, during the New York World's Fair, introduced a truck concept featuring this technology, and it also had a design that still looks futuristic today. Named the Bison, it had an aerodynamic design that made it look like it came straight out of the Jetsons TV series. The cabin took strong inspiration from aircraft designs, was located in front of the wheels, and featured a central console with numerous buttons and control levers. Access to the cabin was provided by lifting its glass canopy, which also served as a windshield and provided exceptional visibility to the driver. Regarding its propulsion system, it featured two gas turbines. One of them, known as GT309, produced 280 horsepower and 1185 newton meters of torque and was used for low-speed operations. The second gas turbine engine generated 720 horsepower and was primarily used for acceleration, climbing slopes, or towing a second trailer. Today, Nobody knows what became of the bison truck concept. It never progressed beyond the initial concept stage. However, the bison will always be a part of General Motors' design history. In places with extreme weather conditions and challenging terrains like Siberia, there's a growing need for all-terrain vehicles capable of navigating such conditions without getting stuck or breaking down. This led to the creation of the ZIL 3906 Aerol, a purpose-built vehicle with a unique design that remains impressive even today. The Aerol has a shorter body than a compact off-roader, but is wider than a classic Hummer. However, its most striking feature is its propulsion mechanism. It relies on tracks equipped with up to 12 tires per side, which are moved by a chain, similar to how bicycles work. This design is supposed to enable the vehicle to overcome various challenging conditions like mud or swamps. The cabin design was inspired by aircraft cockpits, and it could accommodate only the pilot with a small platform behind. Its cargo capacity was around 100 kilograms, which, although it might seem strange, was just what was needed for its mission. The vehicle's functions were limited to the extraction of astronauts returning to Earth, landing in hard-to-reach areas. The Aerol was equipped with a Gaz 71 engine, generating only 115 horsepower, and it featured a steering mechanism similar to that of tanks. In 2012, the sole preserved unit was purchased by the University of Moscow and restored by the same plant where it was manufactured, with the goal of preserving it and showcasing it at university events. Starting from the early 1960s, as airplanes grew larger and required more space, Airports began to transform from simple buildings on the edge of a field into complex systems of terminals connected by extensive corridors. This transformation was driven by the increasing popularity of air travel, although it was still a luxury at the time, resulting in passengers enduring long walks between terminals. To address this problem, Washington Dulles International Airport introduced what became known as mobile lounges, Essentially, these were massive vehicles, weighing up to 76 tons, with the appearance of a train car. They could transport between 90 and 120 people across the runways, moving passengers from one terminal to another, with speeds of up to 42 kilometers per hour. 
The significance of these vehicles led to their adoption in airports worldwide, including those in Paris, Mexico City, and Jeddah. However, various factors led to their decline in use, as airports turned to other alternatives. Among the primary reasons for their decline was their cost-effectiveness, compared to other methods, such as underground train systems or even simpler buses. Nevertheless, at Dulles Airport, there's still a fleet of over 30 of these mobile lounges. Surprisingly, in 2023, an initiative emerged to refurbish and put a couple of them back into service at a cost of $16 million. It's incredible to think that the now extinct Soviet Union was the birthplace of a truck that was seriously considered as the most progressive transport unit in the world during the renowned International Motor Show in Paris. This happened in 1988 when the Maz 2000 truck, an invention of the Minsk automobile plant, was presented at the event. Innovatively, it was proposed as a modular road train following the idea of simple coupling and disassembly. In theory, it had a length of 14.9 meters, a basic weight of 12 tons, and a total weight in an advanced transport configuration of 33 tons. Its design allowed it to have a cargo volume of approximately 83 cubic meters, representing 5 to 10 meters more than classic road trains of the same length. Its modular design directly influenced all aspects of the truck, as its cabin and propulsion system were separated into modules. Regarding the latter, it featured a MAND 2866 engine generating nearly 300 horsepower, coupled with a 12-speed gearbox, giving it the capability to reach highway speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour. Although some of the solutions in the Maz 2000 were innovative in the Soviet Union, most had already been introduced by other brands like Renault. In the end, the prototype units of this truck were transported back to the plant where they were created, as the proposal for mass production never materialized. Extreme motorsports have always been the perfect opportunity for various manufacturers to test themselves and demonstrate the engineering capabilities and advancements of the vehicles they produce. Starting from this, the Italian company Astra, along with Princess Carolyn of Monaco and her then-husband, set out to win the legendary Paris-Dakar rally in 1958. The main idea behind this collaboration was to implement something special that would give them an advantage over their competitors. And the answer was to create a truck capable of outperforming the others in sandy terrains. The result was an Astra BM 309 6x6 unit that had an additional track system installed to enhance its off-road capabilities on sand. These tracks were hydraulically retractable and integrated on the sides above the rear wheels. However, due to not having had enough time to test the performance of this design, the results of this modification were counterproductive. Due to the added weight of the entire system, the truck's weight increased to 16 tons, compared to the 10-ton weight of its competitors. Consequently, the power of its 12-liter Detroit diesel engine proved insufficient. Additionally, the raised position of the retracted tracks significantly altered the truck's center of gravity, requiring cautious driving, especially in high-speed curves. This led to the unit driven by the Princess of Monaco and her husband crashing and withdrawing from the competition. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it valuable. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. We can't wait to see you in the next one.